This movie is an excerpt from a longer lesson and you can find out more evidence-based information about childbirth physiology and practice in my blog, podcast, books, courses, mailing list and membership. Please see the links in the description and subscribe to this channel to be notified of new content. During a contraction, the pressure is equalised throughout the fluid rather than directly squeezing the baby, placenta and umbilical cord. So this is called general fluid pressure and it protects the baby and their oxygen supply from the effects of powerful uterine contractions. So the placenta isn't getting squeezed as much in the baby or, and or cord is not getting compressed. The amniotic sac is described as having two sections. The forewaters that are in front of the baby's head and the hindwaters that are behind the baby's head. They are not separate and the fluid can move between the two. So the fluid from behind the baby can get squeezed past the baby's head into the forewaters and this does happen during a contraction. So that term is really used to describe the areas of the amniotic sac rather than the fluid because the fluid is moving about. So the pressure of a contraction will squeeze the amniotic sac, making the fluid in front of the baby's head bulge through the cervix, so the forewaters. And this stretches the cervix open because remember from previous lessons that the cervix doesn't open so much as it is pulled up over the baby's head. And this bulging of the amniotic sac through the cervix kind of presses it open to help to stretch it during a contraction and it will often as the contraction goes and the bulge recedes the cervix will close again until the next time it's stretched open by the bag of fluid. As the cervix is pulled open the sac begins to bulge into the vagina and it helps to stretch the tissues at the top of the vagina ready for the baby's head to move into. Another function of the amniotic fluid during labour is to assist with rotation and descent of the baby. So the fluid gives the baby the ability to move and rotate because it's much easier to move and rotate when you've got a little bit more space because the fluid is holding the uterine muscle from direct compression and it's easier to move in water. And when the amniotic sac does rupture, which is usually once the cervix has been almost pulled up over the baby's head, often during the transition phase of labour and birth. When it ruptures, it further lubricates the vagina, assisting with the descent of the baby through the vagina. Amniotic fluid is also important in the initiation of breastfeeding. So colostrum smells and tastes similar to amniotic fluid, as we've previously said, and once the baby is born, this helps the baby to find their food source. Babies are also born with amniotic fluid on their hands and that allows them to taste and smell their hand, then their mother's skin. So they do this hand to nipple to mouth movement and that's why it's really important not to dry baby's hands after birth because it's through this hand to nipple to mouth movement that the baby is able to smell, taste and assess where they are and how whether or not they're on the nipple and getting colostrum or not.